Hello, today we are going to learn about forensic entomology. This is a field of forensic science that deals with the analysis of insect evidence in legal investigations. And we find that forensic entomology is mainly used in violent, ca violent cases or violent crimes. These are crimes that mostly involve murder or the, the loss of life. Forensic entomology is a very important branch of forensic science that seeks to answer various questions in, which include where on the body were the injuries, was the body moved after death, was the victim restrained while alive, was the body covered, buried or submerged in water, was the disease exposed to chemical, toxic chemicals or even under the influence of recreational drugs. These questions get the for, get a forensic entomologist in their analysis and help them to come up with good results. It guides the investigation procedure and process leading to them getting answers or helping them solve various cases. Find that forensic entomology has been used in various cases, in solving various cases and giving different ideas or evidences which include estimating the PMI, that is the postmortem interval. This and this is done by the study of the development of stages of several flies or insects that are used that are actually involved in the in the process, that is the whole decomposition process, that is insect succe succession. When that Insect colonization of a corpse occurs in series of steps where there are different groups are adapted to the different decomposition stages of a corpse and this is predictable that is in the different stages of decomposition as we are going to see below. Then there is entomotoxicology. Entomotoxicology is the analysis of drugs and toxins on the development stages of, of current feeding insects. In that maggots may be used to determine the presence or absence of drug when human tissues are too decomposed to be analyzed. This linking a suspect to a crime scene or a victim. This could be using insects insects bites that are similar to the victim and the suspect or insect evidence that is similar to the suspect in the crime scene. Identifying the location of foods on a corpse. We find that presence of open woods would be shown by the presence of a maggot mass. Determining whether the body was moved, identifying the geographic origin of the crime scene. These two are solved by asking yourself the questions, were the insects found on the body inhabitants of that environment or of a different environment? The answer to that helped in solving the two questions. Identification of the victim. This is by using the DNA that's found on the maggots that already fed on the corpse where the human tissues are too degraded for DNA analysis. Identifying the source of contrabands by checking whether the insects are inhabitants of that area and also providing evidence of abuse or neglect. For example, if a person was tied or restrained when they were alive, they didn't move, there would be fecal material in urine and urine and House flies would be the first to arrive, as you know. House flies are attracted to to that as compared to other flies. That would therefore be an evidence of abuse or neglect. In that case, those are the various applications of forensic entomology that help forensic scientists or forensic entomologists in solving various crimes where entomology is being used. Stages of decomposition. There are five stages of decomposition. And one is the fresh stage. This stage commences at death. There is autolysis, which is the breakdown of proteins and carbohydrates into smaller compounds. And then you find that flies begin to, alive, to arrive. Blue flies are the first to arrive. You have the bloated stage, which is the second stage. And this is the putrefaction putrefaction begins and there is raising temperature and there is order of decaying flesh 
and due to putrefaction you find that there is swelling of the abdomen because of the gases that are being released the third stage is decay and you find that the abdominal wall breaks allowing gases to escape therefore the carcass tends to deflate and then the larvae begin to pupate there is strong odor and, dark, and signs of darkened or darkening tissues and the decay stage occurs in between around 5 to 11 days after death there is post decay stage in this the remains are skin cartilage and bones and here we find that there are beetles because beetles are attracted to dry areas and like flies which are which go to moist areas then we have the last stage being dry or skeletal stage and here the remains are bones and hairs and in wet and viral we find that hide beetles are replaced by we find that wet beet we find that hide beetles are replaced by nubbit and the dubid insects limitations of forensic entomology everything has a challenge or a limitation we find that forensic entomology relies on a insect abundance and we find that in winter there are fewer insects hence its use is limited treatments like freezing usually exclude the insects and thus it may end up affecting the estimation then we find that it's also time consuming as it takes a lot of time to rear these insects that will be used to so that their development can their development can be compared to that of the recent weather condition so they have to be reared in the laboratories which takes a few which may take a few days or weeks and that's actually time consuming because they have to be given time to develop time for the analysis time for the conclusion and all that yeah i hope you enjoyed this session see you in our next session thank you